You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or Inside the Book, Inside the Business, where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. One time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline, or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family, and two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37,000 live listeners, and we've been at this for four solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we are still evolving, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect, and we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. Man, we've had celebrities on our show, from Grammy Award winning artists, to nominees, to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors, and aliens. Or people think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out. To book an interview or just to share a real cool story, email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. And that's V as in Victor. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do. And together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. You know the number to dial. 701 801-9813. Text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. Feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here, but only as time permits. Sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour. And as always, all episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, or any app from the Google Play or iTunes store or over at our website. And that goes for every single episode that we ever aired. Hey, what's going on? And welcome to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. Our interviews go beyond the music, the books, the movies, the businesses, and into the minds of the authors or people who create these marvelous aspirations. From researching our special invited guests, mining for details, watching, reading, and listening to everything we can, our interviews are designed to bring out the best answers possible through provoking questions that have real substance. We have a special guest today uh, for this particular hour. Um, you know, uh, we're having an absolutely amazing time talking with her about her book release called God Meets the World and several other books that she wrote. Um, we also talk about her life's journey and maybe the importance of an online presence for authors. Point being, I'm sure he has, she has a lot of incredible things to say here and I don't want to give away too much. So with that, let's go ahead and welcome her to the show. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Hi. It's uh, Bassy Timmons. Yes. How are you doing today? Okay. All right. So, um, thank you so much uh, once again for taking this time and joining us to chat about God Meets the World. 
and um, your life as well. So I guess that's where we should start. Um, let's get a little history from you in terms of um, your past and what has led you to this point um, now in your career. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I was born up in uh, America, in New York. I was brought up as an Orthodox Jew. And our family moved to Israel in uh, 1976. I was 16. I uh, uh, excelled in the Hebrew language. I was very excited. Because in Israel in those days, it was very, very uh, new. We didn't have a lot of money, but everybody was very happy. It was, it was in the good old days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, learned, I learned to be a teacher, a Hebrew teacher, a Bible teacher. I was very excited about life. And I, uh, I, about when I was about 28, I started getting uh, a, a gift. And I, was, I became a healer, started healing people. And my gift also extended to learning. Learning with more intuition than uh, than just regular learning. But, and I wanted to really uh, put an emphasis on the Bible more than another book. And I got into a lot of very deep insights. Oh, yeah? It took me time until I decided to actually write books. I used to write notes and things, but to actually write a book it took many years after many years of experience with working with people I we finally got it we finally got it me and my husband got it down to really you know really getting to work and starting to write starting to write all these things thinking I can't I can't keep all this stuff to myself I have to let the world know yes indeed how long so did it the most take important... yeah. oh, go on. I'm sorry I'm sorry No, it's okay. okay. Yeah, how long did it take to write the book? Yes, the, the first book. The book is like all four books were like all in the beginning. I didn't separate the books. I just okay. wrote. We just wrote a whole bunch. It just had all information just thrown into the computer until it started organizing it. So it was about six years. It's, it's not, it's, it's a lot, a lot of work because everything I say in all of my books, I have to prove. I didn't want to leave anything up to um, argument. Yeah, I mean, you could argue, you could still argue, but I need to have a stronger argument than just he said, I said, you said. I want to prove it. I want to bring the sources from the Bible to prove what I'm saying, that I'm not just inventing things. But even though mm -hmm. some of these things are not known, but they're written. They're written someplace. You can find them. So... That took a lot of time, because you have to find this stuff. Well, I knew enough to know where to look, but still, still I had to have a lot, a lot of, um, you know, uh, help from God to be able to get to to what we got to. That yeah. some some people who are like atheists who read this book, they don't want to read it because it's like you know, they, it's, it's too too many arguments. I'm not leaving them. It, I'm not leaving them choice to, um, you know, to be disbelieving. So my books really, I'm really uh, uh, giving very strong basis for everything I said. So this book, God Meets the World, is, is God meeting the world at Mount Sinai. God meeting the whole, the Israelites, and God meeting the meeting between the spiritual and the physical. Meaning God came down from being... A spirit to having a voice and everybody hearing him in full voice say the Ten Commandments, all of the Ten Commandments, and everybody heard it and and nations heard it for miles. There were nations with the Jewish people besides the besides the Israelites that came out of slavery. There were other nations with them and there were nations from far. But the main thing was that they they got a job. The Israelites had a job to um, to tell the world about the Ten Commandments, to give it over to the world, that the whole world should know about it. But they didn't do it, so I decided I have to do this. <laughs> they didn't do it. They were worshiping idols after that. They didn't yeah. succeed to keep 
this monotheism until it came a couple of uh, maybe a thousand years later to um, the second temple when they got you know really packed down monotheism which I discuss in another book I have called um, God's Hidden Treasure a whole mm-hmm. history of the that early early history and put it all together but this book I want to I want to show how God even decided which Ten Commandments are be, will be the most important ones. In the beginning, he just had Noah. Noah, we, we say Noah in Hebrew with the ch, but the Americans say Noah. But Noah, the word Noah means relaxed. Hmm. The Noah was relaxed in those days. They, everybody were they were all villains and thieves, and he was the one who was you know calm and relaxed. You know, he was the big. Uh, righteous man that everybody came to for advice and he was the one who God loved and God gave Noah commandments but he didn't give him all the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments all the commandments were added later because of the history that is written in the Bible all the stories that were written in the Bible gave God a insight to saying wait this is not enough I can't just tell Noah don't steal, don't worship idols, um, don't eat uh, blood. I have to give more. And he started giving, he started adding and thinking and planning. I have to do this. I have to add, not to covet, because the children of um, of Jacob, they were so jealous of their brother to the point of almost murdering him and selling him into slavery. That's, that's do not steal. The, the real, real worst form of stealing is kidnapping. And he was kidnapped. They kidnapped him from the father and they caused his father tremendous anguish, which is also a um, sin of uh, not respecting your parents. It caused him tremendous suffering. So these, this whole story brought him to adding all different commandments to the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. To the commandments of Noah. Yeah. And we go through that story, and then we go through the Ten Commandments themselves. Each commandment, what does it mean to us? What does it mean to, mod- to the modern world? All right. I mean, what does it mean to the modern world? Do you do you think that uh, the Ten Commandments need to be updated? Like we need some some new rules because there seems like there are some new sins out here. <laughs> That's funny. I think maybe that's what my book is doing. It's updating Ten Commandments. That's really cute. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I talk about abortion. I talk about um, uh, suicide, which was not mentioned in the Ten Commandments. People didn't suicide in those days. But suicide is a form of murder. You, you don't have a right to suicide. You don't have a right to kill. Your body is not yours to kill. So I mentioned that we talk about, you know, the whole argument about abortion. We uh, we allow is, is it just allow abortion? The rabbis allow abortion if the baby is under forty days, the very beginning before it's considered a man, because it says in Noah, to, you're not allowed to kill a man inside a man, or a human inside a human. So a human, we consider it uh, forty days. So that gives some kind of a compromise to allow some some uh, abortions, but you know, really, most uh, um, you know, most Jews girls don't have the heart to abort at all. Mm-hmm. Because you learn about these stories from, from the Bible, how Sarah and and um, Sarah and Rebecca and these women were so begging for a baby, and it's such a long time to wait for a baby that even a 16 year old gets pregnant he said wow what I got pregnant I'm gonna have a baby after learning in kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third grade how hard it is how special it is that Sarah had a got pregnant at age 90 so they ha- they have um excitement and they can't do it a lot of girls it happens to in Israel that they end up uh, um keeping the babies mm-hmm. it's interesting yeah, yeah. And they also have that help. There's organizations here that help help to, uh, women not to abort. They give them money. They help the, to, to 
the finance, the raising of the child. It's just one issue that I mentioned in the book. I mentioned the issue of respecting parents. What happens if your parents are bad? Then do you have to respect them? So I'm discuss the whole issue that to make it updated. That's right. That's what we're doing. Can't respect parents who are, I guess, going over other commandments, the Ten Commandments. There's, there's a limit to how much you have to respect. You can't respect the parents if your father's in the mafia. You know, there's, <laughs> there's, you know, there's a limit. But usually the most, the most important thing to do is, if you are a parent, is to make sure that your children are respected, that you respect your children, because they learn from you to respect. Right. And that's what we're missing today. Parents are yelling at their kids. They, they don't get it. I see them here outside in the park or wherever parents all over just they don't get it they're teaching their children to act like them mm-hmm. you know do what you do what I do not what I say they don't do what you say you tell them to do they they copy you so if you don't respect them and you yell at them every second that's what they're gonna do right so we talked about that that's also an update on the Ten Commandments. That's a, that's a real update. Because the way, um, you know, they didn't have that in the olden days. They didn't have this uh, insight into um, children's rights. So does God meet the world? Well, there's like four parts, right? And well, there was a big part and then you just split it to four parts. Does the entire series serve as like a guidelines for the Bible, in your opinion? Uh, the entire, all the four books, you mean? Yes. I mean, you, you know, some of parts all, of the Bible well, are not easily translated. So like having a manual or a guideline or a guidebook, um, could be helpful in that way and I was just asking is, is are your books kind of seen in that light um not yet but it could be I mean who is God I talk about the creation this is the creation story and about different um the aspects of uh guilt and sin and sacrifices that there were in the olden days why did they do sacrifices so I'm taking from all from all different parts of the Bible and explaining it into modern day language yes and the other book of Choose Life it's not really an explanation of the Bible it's more of a health book but I just use the Bible as as an example of how God really wants us to eat and how God wants us to be healthy and to show their hints in the Bible of real, real strong hints about eating whole wheat and not eating, not drinking alcohol. It says it there. You just have to find it. And I have the, I have the quotes, and it's really, whoever read it was really, really fascinated by it. Hmm. it made a lot of people change the way they eat. It's not, a, it's not a strict, fair diet. I just want people to eat. You know, eat healthy, get them. That's what's called choose life. Just um, get yourself um, to good health because you want, because God wants you to be healthy and you want to be healthy and strong and choose life, not choose death. You don't believe in death. Like there's some religions that believe in death. That death is like good to God. We don't believe in that. We believe that it's good to live. We have to do everything in our power to live and have a healthy life and be strong and have a long life. So I have a chapter on longevity. And that's a very refreshing book. And what else do we have? We have the God's Hidden Treasure I mentioned before. In God's Hidden Treasure, I use, I'm talk, use a lot of those books that people don't read because they're in Aramaic. Daniel and um, Ezra and Emya, the later, the later prophets, because I'm talking about a later um, era and understanding the whole, the whole history of the Bible. How did the Bible get to become 
the Bible of today? How do we have it? How do we have, how how are we sure that those words were really given at Mount Sinai? So that's how it connects to God meets the world. Because in God meets the world, I'm, I'm, you know, really, really, um, you know, really explaining how the how the Bible is so important. But wait a second. How could it be? What are you talking about? 3,000 years ago, people didn't even know how to read and write. They're totally illiterate. How could we still have that same Bible? <laughs> right. So it's really fascinating things that I explain it, that this Bible was actually saved. That's why it's God's hidden treasure. It was saved in stone in the, in the Holy Temple. And when the Holy Temple was destroyed, in the Nebuchadnezzar, the enemies, kept it and they took it and then it was found later by Ezra and he read it out to the nation and they bowed down and they were very very excited we actually had the original bible that was given on Mount Sinai in stone it wasn't written on parchment parchment was much much later it's a myth people think oh you know this uh, scroll that, that Moses wrote like we have today no Right. Yeah. I also proved that I prove that, yeah. It, 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 the scrolls are much later, couple, maybe a thousand years later. They had some papyrus and stuff, but that would never last. But God needed the Bible to last for generations. He knew. He says it in the Bible: "You are going to sin. You are going to worship idols. But remember, you have to have this Bible for me as a witness. The witness has." To Stay alive. It's not going to stay alive on papyrus. Right. It's not going to stay alive on piece of leather. It had to be etched in stone. As a matter of fact, we're making a movie. Oh yeah. We're making a movie called The Ten Commandments. Read, yes. It's already written, and we're from Global Summit, and the writer is Anthony. I forgot his last name. And he's he, he's out there. He started he started um, uh, he started sending it to all his publishers, to all his movie producers, to see um, awesome. to see who's going to take it. So it's a new movie. Yes, it's a new movie of Ten Commandments, and he's showing the the story in full color, in a different light, bringing out my ideas to the world. I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah, I could imagine. That is awesome. So, with all these incredible things going on for you, um, what is the importance of an online presence? Well, I want to reach the world. I'm here in Israel. I can, uh, you know, even even in my own home, it's pretty limited how many people I can reach for my own clients. But I want to reach people from all over the world, not only from America. Right. So if I get an email from somebody who's Philippines, it's very exciting. You know, they also want to know. They also want to hear. They also want to have faith. They want to improve their lives. We want to reach the world. It's just amazing what's going on this uh, this generation. Yeah. The whole world became tiny. <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, we're here in a country where. There's a lot of people from different countries. So we get to meet all different nationalities. Mm-hmm. And it's really, it's really exciting how a lot, a lot of people know about the Bible all over the world. The best seller in the world, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what book is next that you are panning? So Choose Life. Choose Life is going to be published shortly. And that is going to explain a lot of questions that people have about all kinds of diets and fads and putting everything together. I, I explain about yin and yang, about acid and alkaline. I want to put everything into a much um, more sensible light, mm-hmm. something that you can follow. They don't have to be extreme, but to, to understand really what's going on. Why do these diets work? Why do they not work? And, and put it down in writing. I have lists of foods of yin and yang to explain um, 
because the Ramba, Maimonides, also believed in hot and cold foods. But I'm not doing it in the way of macrobiotics, like you, oh, you can't eat any, you have to be extreme and only eat brown rice. Not like that. You can eat everything. You just have to know what's hot, what's for the summer, what's for the winter, what's for hot diseases, what's for cold diseases. Right. And you have to know what what is totally off limits, what is totally not healthy, because it's damaging to your body any any time of the year. Mm-hmm. And I have all kinds of herbs that I write about, diseases that I write about. It's a health book with um, lots and lots of uh, uh, teachings from the Bible because because God does care about what we eat. Yeah. And I show it how God cares about meat and, and also stories, like the story of the slav or the quail. I don't know if you know that story. I don't. The Bible story of the quail, you heard about that? Mm-mm. Yeah, the, the Israelites in the, in the desert, they were screaming for meat. They want meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, yeah, they want meat, they want meat. And, and God didn't say, uh, you know, you can have, they, he, he, you can't eat the cows. So Moses said, if we, if we, just, you know, if we slaughter all these cows, we won't even be able to feed everybody. It's not enough. So I'm not going to slaughter them. <laughs> and, uh... You know, tons and tons of quails came in, mm-hmm. and they just were so ferocious that they just tore them out with and eating with the blood and everything, a big mess, without even without even cooking it. So that was showing like the real, how do you call, it? too much desire for blood. This, 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 this is not good. This is not good. It's not good for our soul. It's not good for us. I'm not. I don't push vegetarianism, but you can't eat blood. You have to barbecue it. You have to clean it. You have to make sure it's, you know, it, it, it's not there. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't. And, and we know now, they all lot of fat and cholesterol and everything, and just lower the amount of meat. Don't have to be totally vegetarian because it does say in the Bible that if you do have a desire for meat, you can have. You can go up on a mountain and slaughter, but it's it's something that you're supposed to wait for to have a desire. It's not something you're supposed to have daily, daily, every day. Mm-hmm. And I show that in, it's very interesting because it's taking uh, till today to for you know regular nutritionists to find that out. So a lot of people, you know, already they're pushing fish. It's saying not to eat meat every day, right? Especially not beef. They were talking about beef and lamb. It wasn't about poultry. Poultry in the Bible, I explained that poultry is fine. It was the issue that we have to cut on is the beef and the lamb and um, I think uh, yeah, goat, beef and lamb are supposed to be for sacrifices. They're not supposed to be for yeah, eating goal, every day yeah. unless you have a direct diet. You must have it, and you can't resist. Okay, so once in a for a birthday you'll have a steak, but it's not supposed to be your daily uh, food. It's not good for you. All right. Yeah, because so, uh, I kind of about like, that. And- like from some of the stories in the Bible, when like some some big occasion happened, like uh, the prodigal son come back, his father killed uh, a lamb, the best lamb, and, and gave him like lamb steak. And I, I don't imagine that's like an everyday meal. Right. So that's a big, big celebration. Wow. Yeah. So that's how it's supposed to supposed to be for a big celebration. Yeah, that's it. And that's the way that's the way it should be. And we should have healthy, lighter foods for every day. And I'm so excited that Global Summit is uh, excited about the book and wanting to publish it. It's going to come out very soon. It's going to be a big change from the regular books that are out there. Oh, a yeah. big change. Hmm. Yeah, because most health books are actually evolutionary based. They, they're explaining things because of evolution, like the caveman diet. Or if you read it, you see they're not, they're not, um, they're, they're not basing it on anything that uh, has to do with faith. Some, I saw a book recently of a doctor who did have faith and did say something, but mostly it's not. Mostly it's, um, they wanted to separate science and God, 
So since nutrition is science, let's go by science. And I don't do that. It makes everything together. Yeah, I agree. So as you're receiving <laughs> word you. from yeah word from God to to be inspired to write these things, how long did it take you to obey? <laughs> to obey? Yeah. Very. <laughs> I was I was like I had to start writing stuff. You know, just you started immediately. I was working so hard. Uh, not overnight, but I guess within a couple of months, it just said that's it. We have to start writing things. We have to do something. I'm just throwing things and, uh, you know, just writing stuff that I wanted to see. I had a, uh, I had an aunt who was an atheist and she wanted to know stuff. So I said, okay, this up. Start teaching her stuff. So that gave me some kind of um, a push to know where where to even start like what do people know or not know mm. and it really helped her I was able to, I was able to break her um, you know she was shocked by some of the things we said she didn't know she didn't know that that there was millions of witnesses that witnessed the Ten Commandments we are claiming millions of witnesses that is uh, it's you can't make that up. You shouldn't make it up. You're going to rake up a story. You say one person saw it, two people saw it, three people saw it. You can't make up a story of millions of witnesses. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's going to be found out. It's going to be found out. <laughs> so she was shocked with that. Shocked. She, you know, studied all different kinds of uh, religions, all of what she really wanted to know. And then she said, what? Are you serious? They're claiming three million witnesses at least. It's like really, really stunned her and made her start thinking differently. That this thing is, can't really be made up. It helped a lot of people. That really helped a lot of people. That uh, um, realization to realize that we're talking about the Bible itself says six hundred thousand men only between the age of 20 and 60. And those men had wives and children and parents that were over 60. This is, she's talking millions of people were there. And they all, they all saw it. And many of them did pass it down to their children. They passed it down. That's why when they did find the Bible, they knew. The children of Israel knew. They right away, they right away bowed down. They knew there was a Bible. Everybody knew, even though they worshipped idols. They knew from father to son that the Bible was given on Mount Sinai. Yeah. Nobody forgot that. Nobody in the world forgot it. All the world knew. It took to the days right. of literacy to make it possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's always been an interesting fact, you know that. Uh, the illiteracy rate back then I mean you had one or two people who were uh, anointed by God to read the scrolls you know to the multitudes but um, beyond that who's to say that they didn't make things up as they went yeah nobody knew how to read and write Moses knew how to read and write that was a big deal and that was why God made him uh, this special privilege of being raised in the palace Mm -hmm. that he was a hidden child and he raised in the palace and he learned how to read and write so he was able to write the Bible but people didn't know I I don't think that Abraham even had an alphabet yet to write yeah because this is like prehistoric the, the alphabet just started like in Egypt there was something there was something there Phoenicians said some clay things but it wasn't it wasn't Hebrew it wasn't his language but in Egypt they started more the reading and writing like a Joseph, Joseph knew numbers. I don't know if he knew letters, but he knew numbers. And because he knew numbers, they put him in charge of everything. They're so excited. Wow, this boy knows how to do numbers. He knows how to uh, uh, add things together with each other. We have to put him in charge of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people didn't know. And they didn't know even after that. They didn't... Uh, one, of the, one of the big, big things I write in God's Hidden Treasure is that there's... Uh, there's a phrase in the Bible that says that you have to 
Remember the words that I am speaking to you and teach them to the children and make them and be to say it again and again that they should remember it. And these words are actually the Ten Commandments. So we have to remember the Ten Commandments and tell it to our children and have them memorize it. Because it, it was the idea of learning at the time was memorizing. People didn't have books. So it's very important. When, when are you going to tell your children? When are you going to teach them? You have to do it again and again and again so they know it by heart. And then we have the, 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 the laws to write the words, these words down on a parchment and we put it on our door, a mezuzah. I don't know if you heard of it. There's a little parchment that we write on our door. And we write it down and that's one of the first uh, laws that we have to write something down. Okay, so that you got, you got me? How that I told you it says in the Bible to, to uh, recite the words of the Ten Commandments to your children and have them memorize it. Yeah. You have to recite them again and again to have them memorize it. That was the way of teaching. I mean, if you if you really think about it, age, those are. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well, what I was saying is, if you really think about it, yeah, those I'm are listening. The, the uh, really the ten principles on how to live your life in the eyes of God. Um, and those commandments can go, you know, either way or and dive deep as like, do not, you know, um, commit murder which is everything including yourself and newborns e even the death penalty you know but um i don't i don't think we actually think about the commandments that deep or meaning other things as well you know i hope that um i i hope that this will change things i hope that my books will get to people to change the way they think about it Make them understand more. Mm -hmm. Because do not murder could also mean just that you have to eat healthy and be healthy. Because you have to not only not to murder, but you have to give life. And, and to save lives and to help people. So, you know? All right. We also have a lot of a chapter about the Sabbath. What does the Sabbath mean? You're not supposed to kill yourself by working seven days a week either. Mm -hmm. So I have a whole big chapter about the Sabbath explaining what it means to a non-Jew. <coughs> Even though we we um, have you know very strict laws about Sabbath, we really don't do anything. We don't do electricity and TVs and but for the whole world, we just. Having a day of rest is, is the way of the world. The whole world is built on a seven-day week. There, is no, there are no countries that don't have a seven-day week. It's part of nature almost. Everybody naturally goes to a seven-day week. So that seven-day week is you have to have one day to stop. It's like enough. And any people we knew who did work seven days a week, they ended up being in really big trouble. Their body or their mind or both went, just, just went. You can't do it. We're not built to, we're not built to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's also, it's also part, even though it's, you know, doesn't seem so, uh, so important, but it is. It is, it's part of living, it's part of, um, it's part of not dying and not letting yourself die, not abusing yourself or others. Making other people work seven days a week was was what slavery was. It forced people to work without without um, breaks, without recesses, without vacation, all these things. I mean, you have to have one day off totally. Otherwise, we're slaves. If we don't. We don't rest on Shabbat, we're slaves. On the Sabbath, we're slaves. That's why it says in the Bible, that it says in the Ten Commandments, I gave you the Sabbath because I took you out of Egypt. Remember, I took you out of Egypt, that's why I gave you the Sabbath. I took you out of Egypt to stop being slaves. So you have to, part of not being a slave, you still have to work. You don't want to sit around all day, you still have to 
motivation to work, but you can't be a slave. You have to take it easy. You have to have, you know, one day for fun, one day for family, one day with no pressure at all. So we believe in that day of Sabbath, not worrying about any business problems, not worrying about, you know, debts or payments or shopping or anything. It's just time to play and have fun and sing and talk and be with family. And that, that helps give more life. It's also part of choosing life. And it helps you. If you have that day of fun, it helps you to be able to keep the other commandments. Because you're in a different state. You're, you're able to, uh, you're able to focus on important things because you're not overworked. We used to force people to work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. A lot of all kinds of uh, court cases and all kinds of uh, stories about how people under sweatshops and then extreme pressure, young children used to be put to work, very young age. It's also part of um, keeping the Sabbath. Just uh, abusing children, they child uh, child labor and abusing animals. It just not to let them be free. So if I would if you would ask me where slavery in the Ten Commandments, that's where it is. It's in the commandments of keep the, the Sabbath. And you can read it in my book. Oh, very, very very interesting and very uh, enjoyable. The whole tone of the books are very enjoyable. Not so serious, not so heavy. All right. I'm sure anybody who reads my book becomes different. They change. They yeah. so can see God in a different light, not as being a uh, very um, demanding, but as more being very caring, like a mommy. He cares about us. God cares about us. That's why. Um, that's why he wrote the Bible and that's why he wrote the Ten Commandments because he wants us to have a good life yeah um, I've heard that if life is not good then God's not done yet so Shemesh um, let everyone know where they can find your books online and find you online okay so we have a uh, website um com and also website authorbatia.com and we have books on Amazon and Barnes and Noble I have a Facebook also but uh, author Batya Shemesh and I invite anybody to please write if they read the book to please write a comment about it so people can have insights and have ideas and see what other people like alright and we will have those links in the description of this episode um, so listeners can click those links and be directed to your website I want to thank you so much for yeah. being my guest again <laughs> I'll tell you technical difficulties um, but we got it so I really appreciate you and I uh, learned a lot today thank you so much and I want to thank Global Summit for having this opportunity to speak to you. Most definitely. Are you still in Israel or are you back in New York? We're in Israel now. You're talking to me in Israel, yeah. Awesome. How's the weather there? Oh, it's summer. We, you know, we were at the beach last night till like 12 midnight. Wow. It's summer. It was cool at the beach. Yeah. We, we have... Um, it, we have a great climate here because where we live is, it's you know, it's all it's pretty warm all year round. I would yeah. guess somewhat like Florida. It gets a little chilly in the winter, a little more chilly than Florida. But basically, it's pretty. Yeah, it's very very nice weather. In the winter, it's spring. In the summer, it's uh, in the summer, it's summer. But in the winter, it's spring. The, sun, the winter doesn't come. Not to where I live. We're living in uh, 
in the, in the Tel Aviv area. In Jerusalem, in the winter, it gets cold, but not snowy cold. Maybe it snows a couple of times, uh, um, a, couple, a couple of times in four or five years, not every year. Hmm. It's a little more cold in Jerusalem. When it does snow, everybody goes to Jerusalem to see the snow. Ah. But, uh, yeah, but where I live, it's, we, want, we love the beach. We want it to be near the beach. Kind of tropical. We want to feel like we're having the close all year round. Yeah. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We <laughs> have fun. Yeah, that sounds incredibly nice. It's part of having a long life. The one to be able to be strong and healthy, and part of being strong and healthy is, you know, just enjoying life and going swimming and sunshine and exercise and just uh, the people here are a little more relaxed because they're by the beach. Also, you know this. In my, in my town, in Batyam, people are, uh, yeah, if you live on top of the beach, it's very close, it's a very small area. Every place in this town, you can walk to the beach. Mm-hmm. So people that close to the beach, it's like, it's open, it's open sea, open to the Mediterranean. Wow. So you, you have all this share, you're not gonna be too uptight about anything. Sounds like the life. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's really good. We love it. I have to get over there. There's one. a lot of parks, a lot of grass. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Thank you. Do. I'll, I'll show you around. I'll be very excited to do that. <laughs> Most definitely. We'll tell you where to see our... Yeah, we've ransacked this country from top to bottom. Yeah. yeah we know where to go. <laughs> Yeah, we love it here. Awesome. Yeah, we just came back from a couple of vacations also. We traveled up north where it's more green and more, um, uh, less, less, cold, uh, less hot. Yeah. We went up to, up to the north, up to the mountains. Yeah, so we did a lot. We've been doing a lot of sightseeing within Israel. Israel is so, it's so small, but every city has almost has a different uh, historical sites, a different atmosphere, different kinds of buildings. It's almost like a different country. So much so that sometimes um, some companies decided to make movies here that instead of having to travel all the way from New York to uh, the Midwest or to the Rocky Mountains, they could do it here within two hours. Because two hours driving without a plane. Because it's so different. We have the Dead Sea and we have the, you know, the mountains of Hebron with skiing. Everything within the same con- tiny, tiny country. We have very, very fascinating um, place to visit. You don't get bored. You're here for you know, 30 years. You never get bored of touring the country. It's endless. We just came back from the Galilee. We were at the Sea of Galilee for a week. Oh, wow. It was awesome. I definitely would love to visit Galilee. Yeah. 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 It was awesome. It's sweet water. Sweet, rocky water. Delicious. Well, all right. We're going to let you go um, at Yeshemesh and hope you, that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. All right, enjoy. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store. Or our website and that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired if you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play email it to the radio at only one media group.com if it's music please label it by artist and title here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it 
Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. Now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.